Well, hey there, my name's Kyle, and welcome to Living Hope Online. Thank you so much for choosing to spend some of your time with us. Hey, before we get into our content, I wanna invite you to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything that we have for you. We're here for you. Hey guys, um, I'm so uh, glad to be joining you for a third time with uh, good friends of mine, John and Erica. I hope um, you guys um, have watched our two previous episodes. Um, I think John has a joke to share with you guys here in a moment. Um, but I just want to let you know um, that today we're going to be really focusing on serving, talking about serving uh, as a body of Christ. Um, you know, Paul was a servant of the Lord. Uh, the disciples were servants. Um, it is important for us as believers, the body of Christ, to serve others. And so that's what we're really going to be focusing on today. Uh, so, John, why don't you start us off with a joke uh, you have prepared for us? Yeah. All right. Ready? This one you guys might know. Uh, it's kind of corny. But what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Oh. All right. Hey, that's, that's a good one. All right. How about this one? What do you call a cow with only two legs? A cow with only two legs. Mm hmm. You call it lean beef. Oh, I know oh, that one. Because okay. yeah, it, it's lean in. You get okay. that? You get that? Okay. Yeah. What do you call a cow? What do you call a cow? That, what do you call a cow that's on your plate? Dinner. <laughs> ah, I'm usually good at these. That's a good one. Come on now. Come on. All right, those are good. Those are good. I, I think they might um our students might think those are corny. Let's let it drop in the description below or the comments below what you guys thought at a scale of one to ten how good uh John jokes were today. Come on now. All right, guys, why don't, we, why don't we get started? So last week we really focused on faith. Um, as believers. And today, I think a great transition would be how has our faith as a student and as someone in college allowed us um, or, or pushed us to serve Christ? Yeah, it's an awesome question um, because I think serving is, is a thing that we are all to do. Um, and for me in college, uh, where I, I, I go, I, well, I went to Liberty, um, but on the, on the hall, um, you have small group leaders who kind of, um, you have six guys who you kind of disciple. Uh, and so um, I had the opportunity to serve in that position or in that role for three years through my freshman, through my junior year. Um, and through that, I've learned and grew so much as A, a person, B, as a leader, but also um, as a guy in the hall who really just wanted to see the other guys in the hall grow for Christ and, and to learn about him more. Uh, and it was, it was an awesome thing to, to be able to serve like that because um, I think I personally grew more um, due to that. Uh, and so through serving, um, I served, but also I got so much in return, way more than what I poured out, poured out which was awesome. Um, and so um, like scripture says, like Christ came um, not to be served, but to serve. Um, and so I think we should all take that type of position and humble ourselves to be able to serve others. I think James, in James, spoken of that faith without works is dead. Um, and I always think of the illustration that in Christ, we've been given a new life. It's almost like if we're on a gurney um, in the hospital and Christ in, and his salvation um, shocks us in the life. And what good is it as believers, as people who have been redeemed by Christ, who've been given a new life, shocked the life back on the gurney, uh, if we just stay there? Christ has given us a new life to get up and live and, and live to glorify him. Um, and, and if we just stay on the gurney, um, it's just not used. We're not used to him. We're not being able to give God glory. It doesn't mean that we're not saved, but it's just like, I gave you this life. You're just going to sit there on the stretcher, you know, like what good is that? So, yeah, that's good, Jack. That's good. Um, I think something that I've really loved, I love talking about serving and service because something that I've learned over my, you know, lifetime is that serving just looks like loving others. And so for me as a student, I always thought that serving meant that, I mean, yes, yeah, serving physically, you serve on Sundays at the church, you go on trips, you um, serve with children's ministry, but ultimately like serving is loving people. And so um, for me, I've just learned that 
practical ways of serving are being a friend to someone that needs a friend, you know, showing kindness to my family when they are driving me insane, especially through this quarantine and, um, you know, just helping out the neighbor. Um, I think I've learned that serving, yes, is it's obviously very practical. Um, we go on trips, we serve with children's ministry, we do all different sorts of service opportunities, but serving just looks like loving the people around you. I think that's great. So as we're talking about serving, um, how have you specifically served Christ and his church? Um, how have you taken the new life you found um, and been on the hands and feet of our Lord and Savior? Um, while you guys think for a second, I can just you know, think of multiple times where I've gone on mission trips um, in cities, um, in other countries, um, and also just loving my neighbors, um, those who I come in contact with, um, my friends and relatives, and, and really um, just trying to be the best that possible, possibly I can, um, an example of Christ. Um, I know I fail uh, consistently and daily, um, but the good news of the gospel is that we are forgiven. And so... I think that's what really motivates me to serve. Yeah, uh, one way that um, I served in college was I found a, a, a home church while being at college because uh, I went to college about six hours away uh, from where I actually live. And it was important to me to find another church that I can be a part of um, for my four years of, of college. Um, and so I was able to do that and, uh, it was cool because we met in the gym and so we had a setup crew, which would meet at six 30 in the morning. Uh, and we'd set up all the chairs, the screens, the projector, um, the stage and everything. And, and of course, like waking up at six 30 on a Sunday while you're in college, you know, it isn't necessarily what you want to do. Um, but it was really a cool opportunity for me to, to be a part of that because, uh, I met so many cool people, uh, doing that, but also, uh, thinking that every single seat that I placed down was a seat um, where someone was going to be able to hear the gospel maybe for the first time. That's yeah, great. that's good. Like such a small um, thing, you know, setting up chairs um, is yeah. huge um, in serving the Lord. Yeah, that's good. I kind of touched on this last question, but um, practically in college, one of the ways that I got to serve was as the prayer chaplain for the social work department. And so basically I was the point person that planned all of the Bible studies for the social work department. I was the person that planned the prayer events. Um, I sent out the emails, you know, asking for if anyone needed prayers, I prayed in classes. And so um, this was something that was um, so encouraging to me, not only that I got to serve, but I was poured into in so many ways getting to be the prayer chaplain through professors and through, um, you know, people that were older and wiser that could pour into me um, and just show that example of what it looked like to be a Christian in the social work profession and how, you know, those two things come together. And so I've just learned a lot about um, through that position. I've learned a lot about, like I said, loving others and how serving while yes, is very practical. It's also very emotional. Um, you serve people emotionally. You can serve your friends emotionally. You can serve your family emotionally. You can serve anyone around you. Uh, what do you think motivated you to do that, Erica? Yeah, um, obviously my relationship with Christ was the first motivator that really encouraged me to do that. I mean, um, Jesus was the ultimate servant. He is that example of service that we should follow. But also having, like I said, the older and wiser people that were pouring into me and exemplifying to me what it looked like to be a Christian in the social work profession and how... Um, that is something that like that's a calling on my life that I have to pursue is that yeah I don't know if that answers your question Jack but <laughs> no I think it's good I think it's um you know Christ is just the common denominator of why we do yeah. anything um and why we serve and out of his love for us we love others yes so John um why do you feel like serving is important, especially as a student, whether that was in high school or in college, why is it so important to get out and serve? Yeah, I think it's important to get out and serve uh, because it teaches you um, that it's not all about yourself um, and that, that, that we are, honestly, we are called to serve others uh, in such a way that doesn't, you know, put them above ourselves, but we are thinking highly of someone else. Um, in, in the sense of, hey, like I will go to the soup kitchen 
and because I value you as a person because Christ values you and we're going to serve you, you know, or if you, you know, we do this thing at college uh, called Serve Lynchburg. And it's a Saturday event where um, about 10,000 college students, we all get together and we go out to the city that our school is in and we go and serve in different aspects. Um, I remember I had to serve at a, at a, um, a boys and girls club. And, and what we were doing was we were shoveling rock from the back of the building to the front of the building for the path. Um, and it was raining and it was just cold weather. And you might be thinking, man, that shoveling rock from the back of a building to the front of a building isn't an act of serving. That's just a, 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 a task that needs to be done. But if you think that way about that, then, then you got to think about where's my heart at? Am I just doing this for uh, my self gain or am I doing this to actually help out someone who needed this to be done? Um, and so uh, I was able to serve in that way. And, and it was it was challenging because I truly was like kind of conflicted at the time thinking, man, they just needed rock to be moved from A to B. But at the end of the day, I thought, wow, like this path that, that we're making with these rocks, like people um, who don't have the best home situation are going to walk through this path into the building and get help that they need. Um, and so um, that was a very humbling experience um, as to why um, I serve and to why that we should serve. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things is to develop a servant mindset, whereas yeah. we don't even think before we serve. Like, we just mm -hmm. do it. Like, we see someone in need. We see something that needs to be done, and we're the first one out of the chair. We're the first one to step up and help out a leader. I think yeah. um, that's the mindset Christ values and wants and desires from us, but we have to be willing to let him do that and do it so much that it becomes natural and becomes a part of us. Our goal yeah. is to become like Christ, and there's no greater way for us to become like Christ other than to serve alongside and for Christ. Yeah, yeah and that comes, that comes to the, the prompting of the Holy Spirit and, and discerning His voice. Um, that's, I mean, that's a whole other topic for a whole other day, but uh, being able to discern what the Lord is prompting you to do um, in the act of serving or, or, or helping out someone else, um, that's a um, that's that's one of the biggest things I've learned as well uh, is being able to understand what the Lord is calling me uh, and prompting me to do. Um, yeah, I think the Holy Spirit plays in a significant role um, in in getting us to take a step of faith, maybe go outside our comfort zone and serve in a way that we might not have um, without His doing. Uh, I think we can end on this. Um, which is just a, such a great conversation about serving as a student and, and its importance. Um, Erica, you just got back this year from Uganda, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was that experience serving Christ in um, a third world country? Yeah, so my trip, my trip was actually very unique because I wasn't necessarily on a, what we call a missions trip. I was actually there studying, um, but I got to serve Christ in such a different way and serve the people of Uganda because I wasn't providing for them. I wasn't going to Uganda with all the answers. I wasn't coming to provide something for them. I was going to Uganda to learn and to sit and to listen and to be with that community and that culture and just to learn more about who God was in a different culture. And so going to Uganda was so unique um, because I just got to experience service in a different way that wasn't, you know, me providing for another person, but it was that like taking the time to sit and listen and be with the Uganda community and learn, you know, what they believe about God and um, just get to experience Christ in such a different way. Um, and so I think that this just goes to show, you know, like serving is loving others. And so for me, this going to Uganda was sitting and listening to these people and loving on them um, through just being present with them. Um, so yeah, Uganda, I just am learning that service is not just always providing, um, but it can just be being present with people or, you know, just being a friend to someone that needs a friend or, yeah. Yeah, I think Colossians 4 really just shows us that the body of Christ is active and at work in so many different ways mm. um, than we can even think about. And I think every day of our lives plays an important role in developing who we are as Christians and as Christ followers. And um, I'm just encouraged and so thankful for you guys to be able to join me and share with our students um, just your heart um, and what God has done uh, in you. Um, and so thank you guys for um, finishing up this, uh, this series with us. Um, we're finally done the book of Colossians. I know everyone um, can be happy after almost, I think, 10, 11 weeks in Colossians. 
Um, and so I just want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, and just thank you, John and Erica, for being here with us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Before we say goodbye, I'd love to fill you in on a few things that you need to know about here at Living Hope. And so first, just because we may not be together in person, that doesn't mean that we still can't stay connected. There's still a lot going on, and the easiest way for you to find out more is by checking out our website, linked in the description below. And second, we still want to hear from you, whether it's uh, what prayers or praises we can join you in, or, or just to catch up, there's a link to our online connection card down in that description as well. And, and again, no matter where you are, we're glad you're here. God loves you, we love you, and we hope to see you again soon.